Hello, I'm Angie Rizzi. I'm with the GLOBE Partnership at NASA Langley Research Center and a contractor with AdNet. And I'm here today to talk about the GLOBE Educator One Week Pacing Guide for Solar Eclipses. Uh, we developed these guides here at NASA Langley through a partnership between GLOBE Mission Earth and NISIC, as well as the NASA HEAP team. The pacing guides have a general format that is the same across, which I'll be going over. They all include background information and a five-day sequence of activities along with additional resources. Each pacing guide covers a phenomenon. In this case, we're talking about solar eclipses. The grade level is indicated for solar eclipses. We have content appropriate for grades three through 12. There's a guiding question. In this case, it is what do scientists learn about Earth's atmosphere from solar eclipses? There's also contact information to find out more about the phenomenon, as well as some further information if you're interested in becoming a globe trained teacher, doing more with the topic, or finding all of the pacing guides. We also align the pacing guides to different standards. Uh, this slide is simply showing the elementary standards, but the solar eclipse pacing guide is also aligned to middle school and high school standards. And these are the next generation science standards in the US. We support them. We are not saying that we completely meet every standard. There's background information for the teacher so that they can uh, learn a little bit more about the topic. So we have a couple of pages of background information about solar eclipses, why NASA studies them, how to safely observe them and also the map so that you can find the location of where you would be during the 2024 total eclipse on April 8th of 2024. Then we have a five-day sequence of activities and if you note here in the right hand column that there are assessment options as well as a connection back to the guiding question um, for every day. So on day one, it is what are the different types of solar eclipses. This is an activity in my NASA data that students can um, participate in. There's kind of a virtual part as well as um, an activity where they can construct a model. And the connection back to the guiding question is what are the different types of solar eclipses? So that's a good way to start. Then on day two, we have modeling eclipse geometry. Uh, we also have this activity is differentiated for different grade levels. But there's a graph that they can either make or use a pre-made version. And then they use disks that are about the size of a quarter and or a nickel and they will move the disks around to model the alignment for a partial and a total and also an annular eclipse. The connection to the guiding question is what is necessary for a total solar eclipse. And the idea here is that the sun, moon, and earth have to be positioned correctly. This is not a two scale model. Day three is all about safely observing the eclipse and there's an interactive activity that um, people can do online and then there's also directions for making pinhole projectors and a couple different options for those. But the connection to the guiding question is what type of eclipse will you be viewing and what is your plan to safely view the eclipse? And since the annular eclipse is already over, we know that it will be a total eclipse in 2024, or they may be observing a partial eclipse if they're not in the path of totality. Uh, so answers can vary, and their plan should include either a um, pinhole projector or um, eclipse glasses that are safe. 
On day four, they can use the Globe Observer Eclipse tool. Um, we have a tutorial for how to use the Eclipse. And um, there is a journal page if they, for some reason, do not have a device. The connection to the guiding question is what changes did you notice during the eclipse? And of course, that will be different for everyone. On day five, we have um, an activity where students look at an animation of eclipse data from the Globe Observer Eclipse tool from 2017 and they answer questions about what happened and if they observed um, the eclipse in 24 then they can compare the connection to the guiding question is what was the overall air temperature impact of the 2017 eclipse and there are a lot of detailed notes there for answers. Day five will continue on every pacing guide and the final question will be a connection back to NASA. This case it is why is NASA interested in your eclipse observations and the teachers can emphasize that NASA can study the effects of solar eclipses on the earth system including clouds, temperatures, wind, and living things um, because we're trying to find out how they change. Every pacing guide also has a list of additional resources, which we do have, including a story map in my NASA data. And so we hope you find these valuable. You can contact me at angela.rizzi at nasa.gov. And the link here on the slide shows you where you can access the pacing guides. Thank you for your kind attention.